Like many, I thought Josh Doxson would become a star in the NFL after he dominated with Trevon Boykin at TCU. But as of 2020, Josh has underachieved so far in his NFL career, and some like to label him as an NFL draft bust. So what exactly happened? In today's video, we will talk about the pretty incredible journey Josh even had to take to get to TCU in the first place, and what happened to his football career. But first, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you love football, smash that like button to help the channel grow, drop a future video suggestion down in the comment section, and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started. When you say the name Josh Doxson, I immediately think of him at TCU, but did you know he didn't even start his collegiate career there? Before I reveal where he first played college ball, let's go all the way back to Mansfield, Texas, aka the place where he was raised. Josh was smaller, skinnier, and more fragile compared to all the other guys his age, which is probably why basketball was his first sport of choice. In fact, he had never played football until he got to high school, and he was also a track star. He would pick up the football though, but after only two years of playing, it looked like he was never going to step on the field again. Since he was so skinny and fragile, he had broken his collarbone, and this was his first major injury. After the game, his mother pulled him aside and told him he was never allowed to play football again. This absolutely destroyed Josh, but he was not going to let the decision be made without a fight. His mother eventually caved in and decided to let her son play because, quote, she saw how much football meant to her son, and she didn't want him to look back years later and wonder what might have been had his mother not forced his hand. Despite the worry she had for her child's safety, she did not want to hold her son back, and I think it's safe to say she made the right decision. As a junior, he wasn't even being recruited for college. He was so small, and now he was injured, so how on earth was he ever going to become a star? He was a 6'2 center in basketball, and a quote, string bean and pads for football, so this made the odds even lower. He would break out to a degree his senior year, catching 40 passes for 640 yards, but that is not what would get him noticed. Tevin Mitchell was a star cornerback for the team, and scouts drove in boatloads to see him play. They saw Josh play, but they weren't impressed by saying, quote, I just don't think they thought he was fast enough and he wasn't very big. But if you put on the tape and watched him catch the ball, it was kind of freakish. Not only did Mitchell help, but then Wyoming wide receivers coach Derek Sage was looking for a kid just like Josh. He surveyed the Dallas metro area for kids who were deemed too slow, small, or short to play for the other Power 5 Texas schools, and that is exactly what he found in him. Sage was so inexperienced as a recruiter, he had to call back to Wyoming to make sure he had the authority to extend scholarships. He was allowed to, and offered Josh after practice one day, and it looked like it was going to be a dream come true for him. Unfortunately, there was a catch though. As for some reason, Josh had always dreamed of playing football in California, so the idea of going to Wyoming was not very appealing. He actually resisted taking a visit there for a while, but he would eventually cave in, visit Wyoming, and commit there when the weekend was done. According to 24-7 Sports, Josh Doxson was a 3-star recruit, 182nd overall wide receiver, and the 1,467th best player in the class of 2011. His mom's decision to let her son continue to play football had paid off, and now he's going to get a chance to play for the Mountain West, one of the better group of five conferences. When he got to Wyoming, he would get a chance to play immediate snaps, and he showed a lot of potential. In his first career game, he got a glimpse of the future as he actually played against TCU. He would go on to help lead the Cowboys back to a bowl game, where they lost in the New Mexico Bowl to Temple. As a freshman, Josh caught 35 passes for 393 yards and 5 touchdowns, but he was unhappy and wanted to head home. His grandfather had been diagnosed with terminal cancer, and Josh was really sad because he was so far away from him, and he felt disconnected from his family. After the bowl game, he informed the staff to be leaving the team and returning back home. At this point, Josh had decided to hang up the football cleats, join a community college, and secure a job at a fast food restaurant before he got a call that would change his life. 48 hours before classes were set to begin, he got a call from TCU's wide receivers coach, and they offered him a chance to walk on. Since his mom worked for TCU, he could get room and board covered pretty easily, and it was going to be affordable for the family. Screw the community college route, he said, and this was a dream come true for him. Going into the 2012 season, the TCU Horned Frogs were set to join the Big 12 Conference, and people were skeptical if they could compete. This is the point where you think Josh has finally turned the corner, but it wasn't. He is apparently very depressed, alone all the time, and spent most of his weekends at home. His mom did help him figure it out though, and by the time spring practice had ended, he was friends with a ton of other players from the scout team. Things were still tough though, because everyone seemed bigger, faster, and stronger than him. He said he felt like a basketball player, trying to master a second sport. Josh would hit the weight room and grind every day to develop into a Big 12 football body. It would finally pay off for him as he would eat better, get stronger, and start to become a vocal leader for the team. He was actually given an award for the best player on the scout team, and he told his mom this is the only award he was ever going to win. 
Going into the 2013 season, Josh had earned the trust of head coach Gary Patterson, and he would finally get a chance to see the field. He would catch his first pass in a loss to number 12 LSU, and then catch his first touchdown pass against southeastern Louisiana. He would make six starts as a sophomore, and his best game came against West Virginia, as he caught eight passes for 92 yards and a touchdown. The Horn Frogs struggled as first-year starting quarterback Trevon Boykin was young and inexperienced. He would finish with a 4-8 record, but Josh showed potential as he caught 36 passes for 440 yards and 4 touchdowns. His role would expand in 2014 as he became the go-to playmaker for Trevon Boykin and TCU football was back. He would go on to tear it up as he caught 2 touchdowns in their win over Minnesota, helped them beat rival SMU, and then the hype became unreal after the Frogs knocked off number 4. He finished the year with 9 catches for 151 yards in a touchdown against Iowa State. The Horned Frogs were 11-1 and ranked number 3 in the country. But somehow they got screwed out of a college football playoff spot and were ranked number 6 when the college football rankings came out. It was terribly unfair, and they were forced to settle for the Peach Bowl against Ole Miss, where they absolutely killed the number 9 Rebels. This was super unfortunate, and I remember being outraged that TCU didn't get in. They clearly deserved it, and they just got screwed. As a junior, Josh blew up as he caught 65 passes for 1,018 yards and 11 touchdowns, but he would somehow do better in 2015. The Trayvon-Josh connection was special, and TCU was expected to compete for the national championship with those two. They began the season ranked number two in the country, and defeated Minnesota on the road in week one. Josh would become a touchdown machine as he caught 171 yards and two touchdowns against SMU, and had a career day with 18 catches, 267 yards, and three touchdowns in a win over Texas Tech. He would then go on a tear. He caught 129 yards and two touchdowns against Texas, 155 yards and two touchdowns against Kansas State, 190 yards and two touchdowns against Iowa State, against Oklahoma State, and this dude was arguably the best receiver in college football. Unfortunately, TCU had been hit with a rash of injuries, which included star quarterback Trevon Boykin, and Dawson also went down with an injury in their loss to Oklahoma State. They had a chance to make the playoffs still though, as they were set to play number 7 Oklahoma on the road. Backup quarterback Foster Sawyer was thrusted into the spotlight and tied the game with a minute left, but they failed the two-point conversion and the playoff season was over. They defeated Baylor in double overtime the following week and beat Oregon in an amazing comeback in the Alamo Bowl, but Dawson never got a chance to be a part of those. Before the injury, he racked up 1,379 yards on 79 catches and 14 touchdowns to go along the way. After the season, he was a consensus All-American and left for the 2016 NFL Draft. Dawson would finish second all-time in receptions, first in career yards, and first in career touchdowns. He was an absolute stud, and everyone thought he was going to dominate in the NFL. Josh was widely considered one of the best wide receivers in the 2016 NFL Draft, but scouts were still concerned about his lack of size and injury issues. Despite that, the Washington Redskins felt the need to take him with their first round pick, so Josh was now officially an NFL player who went at number 22 overall. Things would start out shaky for him as he had to sit out the preseason due to an Achilles injury he had suffered. He would catch a total of two passes before he was placed on IR for his rookie season. People were hoping it would just be one bad luck injury, and that's what it looked like. He would play in all 16 games his second year, with notable moments like him catching his first touchdown against the Raiders, a diving catch late in the game against the Seahawks that would help them win, and a game-winning touchdown against the Giants. He was solid as he caught 35 passes for 502 yards and 6 touchdowns. He had bounced back from his injury, shown some progress, and was expected to take a huge leap in 2018. Thankfully, he stayed healthy, but his 2018 campaign was very disappointing to say the least. He caught 44 passes and increased his yards to only 532, and he only caught two touchdown passes. These weren't bad stats as he did finish second on the team, but compared to his hype and expectations, so the Skins declined his fifth year option, and he was eventually released from the team. He was signed by the Minnesota Vikings, where he spent time on IR, and played a total of seven snaps. Going into 2020, he was given one more chance with the New York Jets on a one-year deal, but he has chosen to opt out of the season due to COVID-19 concerns. He's apparently using this time to spend overseas in Africa to help underprivileged kids. That right there is the reason why Josh Doxson is quote, an NFL bust. He has the talent and drive to be successful at football, but as his career has progressed, it seems other things have become more of a priority for him, and his heart is no longer in the game of football. After doing some research, it seems as if Josh's height, speed, and limited route running abilities also affected his career, and combine that with a lack of targets, injury issues, and likely some lasting damage from that Achilles injury, plus with the lack of heart in the game, it's easy to see why Josh did not live up to all his hype in the NFL. I hope Josh does what he wants to do in life, and he seems like the kind of guy who is going to succeed in whatever he does. So let's worry about Josh Docks and the person, instead of Josh Docks and the football player. He was one of my favorite college football receivers of all time, and he at least had two somewhat productive seasons in the NFL. I want to know what you guys think of him, and why you guys think he didn't pan out. 
If you enjoyed his story or want to support the channel, be sure to smash that like button and drop a comment. I know it seems minuscule, but every single like, comment, share, and even just staying till the end help the channel grow tremendously and help me put more work into this. If you are new, do not forget to subscribe and also check out all my other What Happened To videos. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.